It's healthier to be fat and have muscle than it is to be skinny and not have muscle. Now, I know this is a generalization, but it is true, generally speaking, to be fat with muscle than it is to be skinny with no muscle. Is this for Justin? Yeah. <laughs> I feel so validated. <laughs> No, Actually, just, whatever. Did you see this guy? Did you see his new Facebook profile? I saw it. I was gonna. Oh, I was gonna. Why do you think he posted? It? I was gonna crop it and be like, "There goes Justin again, putting his face on my body." You know what I'm, I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't comment. I you did. I actually, I actually, I actually screenshotted it, cropped it. And then never got around to post again. And then I heard you. Sorry, and I had another one of my asshole friends like ask me if I was on trend. So I was wow, like, oh, thanks. That's, that's a good compliment. <laughs> Bro, well, you can't win. Trend hard, dude. Are you, are you either fat or you're so buff that you must be doing lots he of trends drugs? Trend hard, man. Yeah. Every day, trend <laughs> hard. Dude. Clan and trend hard. Yes. That's so funny. No, I love. The, I actually, I actually really like uh, this tip, right? Because uh, and a couple things. One. Um, you know, you you see sometimes these power lifters that have these big bellies, and people are like, "Oh, po power lifters aren't healthy. Look at their big old beer guts that they have, and stuff like that." Yeah. Um, and then you also have you know people that uh, are that carry extra body fat on them, just genetically seem to be have a higher body fat percentage, but then can do really athletic things. Mm -hmm. And so there, it, it's not as simple as like, "Oh, just because you look ripped or you looked fit that you're." fit and healthy, you can actually carry a higher body fat percentage and still be yeah. much healthier than the, what we would call back in the days, the skinny fat person. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, um, when I was doing research for, uh, the resistance training revolution, I was blown away by how protective muscle by itself was mm -hmm. like, they have studies on obese individuals who lost no weight during the study. All they did was gain a little bit of muscle. And you saw significant improvements in things like insulin uh, sensitivity because muscle so metabolically active, it tends to balance out hormones. It improves insulin sensitivity. It muscle is anti-inflammatory in, in the body. Now, yes, body fat itself by itself is also a risk factor, but muscle so protective that, and of course we're not talking the extremes. Like you brought up the example of power lifters. So people are gonna be like, Oh, but power lifters is that like, of course, there's extremes with sports. So like powerlifters tend to be on the extreme end as well. Right. I'm talking generally speaking, if you had two, in, if you had two twins and one person had very little muscle, but was also skinny, the other person had a lot of muscle, but had higher than what would be considered normal body fat. The person with more muscle will probably be healthier. First of all, muscles mobile. It improves mobility. It, it decreases inflammation, improves insulin sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Like r little muscle, it, it is very unhealthy on the body. It just is. It causes lots of problems. The most unhealthy population are people with little muscle and lots of body fat. That's when it gets real bad. So what's my point with this is, you know, working out, getting fit and getting strong, even if you don't get leaner, although that contributes to getting leaner, you have significantly improved your health just because you built some muscle. Well, this also like coincides and goes right along with like our recommended advice. A lot of times in, in seeking muscle building as you're before, even you're trying to lose weight. So yeah. you're trying to actually like physically change your composition by adding more muscle uh, to your body, which is more protective, have all those qualities you had mentioned. Uh, but then long-term is a better strategy on top of that for then getting leaner. Way better. better strategy. I mean, when you also go to, you're also not including the things that could uh, adversely happen if you all of a sudden cut calories yeah. and boost activity. So, you know, it's crazy because I think I started doing that well before I fully understood the science behind it. I just, it, through practice, I just realized mm -hmm. it. I was like, wow, that this seems to be a better strategy when mm -hmm. I focus my clients on adding healthy foods, getting strong and lifting weights and not being concerned about the scale, even when they come in and say, Adam, I need to lose a yeah. hundred pounds. Yeah. So I, I think this I just did the same validates thing. that. I did the yeah. same thing, but it was for different reasons. Um, so it's kind of like I stumbled upon it. I did it because when a client came to see me two or three days a week, I knew I could at least train them right. The diet part was always hard because I'm not around when you're eating you know, seven days a week. So I always, th I would right. always tackle the weight loss later. Mm -hmm. Now I always say, hey, look, at least you're here now. I'm going to train you. Let's just focus on getting you stronger. Let's get, let's build some discipline and consistency there. And then we can look at diet. And little did I know that that was actually the best approach anyway. Cause of course, more muscle speeds up the metabolism, improves your hormone profile, improves insulin sensitivity. It makes the weight loss easier. It makes the fat loss easier. I should say, so much, much more of a catalyst for all those other like beneficial yeah. effects. But, but mobility is a big one. People don't, don't understand this. Like, especially as you age, muscle is what makes you mobile. It's what yeah. makes your body able to move. 
And as you get older, look, there's a there's there's older there's a lot of elderly people who are skinny and have terrible mobility because they have no strength and no balance. Their health is not good at all. Uh, versus someone who's older who might be a little overweight. Of course, I'm, there's extremes here. So someone watching is like, well, yeah, if you're 500 pounds with muscle, that's not good. Like, okay, relax, everybody. I'm not talking about the extremes and speaking generally, but if you're, if you're, let's say, 20 pounds overweight, but you have muscle and mobility, you can move, you're strong, of course you're going to be healthier. By the way, the blood markers uh, and, the, and the tests you'll get at the doctor will show this. If you take somebody and you get them just to build little muscle, um, you'll see these improvements. Uh, in, typically, more improvements with a little bit of muscle gain than you will with a little more fat loss. Mm -hmm. So it's just something that nobody talks about um, that needs to be uh, discussed. Okay, so I'm super curious. We, you know, when we get in here, we have the, I look up at the TV screen, I can see the notes that each of us have put up there for Doug. And a lot of times, like, I'll read and see, and I'm like, oh, okay, I know that's Justin, or I know where that's coming from. Sal, a lot of times, handles the partnerships and sponsors that we have. And so I'll see like a, a, a snippet, and I'm like, oh, I know where Sal's going. Okay. You've got Ned as fat loss. Like I'm so, I'm so, <laughs> Wait a minute. yeah, I'm so intrigued by where you're going with this, bro. There's this. <laughs> we've talked about this before. There's this really weird paradoxical thing that they keep finding in studies. So they find that people that consume or use marijuana on a on a semi regular basis. Uh, consistently in the, in the studies that they do have lower BMIs, which is or leaner, which is mm. ironic if you're a, a, a weed smoker, like right. I have been and you get the munchies and stuff. That's so why it's paradoxical. That's why it's so crazy. Like yes. you would think that it would be the opposite. Anybody who's, and, and that's one of the ways that I actually mitigate, well, like uh, weight gain or body fat is like, I reduce my weed consumption at night or post dinner because I know that mm -hmm. that causes me to eat and munch. So, and I've, I'm, familiar with a lot of these studies. I've always thought that's so weird. So there, so people are like, this is crazy. No, no, no. First of all, again, the studies are consistent on this. Animal studies show this. There's human studies that show this as well. Uh, it's paradoxical again, because everybody knows that weed or cannabis is supposed to make you eat more. It's and, associated with the and be lazy. And be lazy. <laughs> right? Want to move less. Like what the hell is going on? Eat By onions the, and sit on the couch. Okay. <laughs> this is how, this is how uh, interesting the, the, the data is. Pharmaceutical companies right now, right now, there are several pharmaceutical companies that have drugs in their pipeline, their development pipeline that are cannabinoid based. Okay. So cannabinoids are the class of molecules that THC falls under, CBD falls under, all the cannabinoids found in the hemp plant or the marijuana plant fall under. There are currently drugs, like I said, there's several pharmaceutical companies right now who are researching cannabinoid based drugs for weight loss and diabetes. Oh, wow. Because- wow. They see the effects. Cannabinoids seem to, mm. in many cases, improve insulin sensitivity. And the CB1 receptor, which is one of the cannabinoid receptors, so there's two, two of them that we know of, the CB1 receptor affects metabolism. And the data is showing that it may speed up metabolism. In other words, activating this receptor may actually teach your body to burn more calories. So, and again, pharmaceutical companies don't pursue something Unless it's because, I mean, you know how much money it costs to take a drug from conception to market? It's like a billion dollars. They don't pursue just anything. They don't, they don't do that. Uh, but they are because it's really weird. So Ned and, and, and weight loss, obviously it's kind of tongue in cheek because Ned is a hemp oil product that's got full spectrum cannabinoids. It, it, the data is very clear on things like inflammation, euphoria, sleep. Those are things we know it works, but it is very interesting and the reason why I'm bringing it up is I th we're probably going to see weight at some point in the future weight loss type products that are cannabinoid based because again these studies keep coming out. So you said it's the CB1 CB1. So that's the main one they attribute it like most of the fat loss to. They think because it does affect metabolism okay. and activating it seems to speed up the metabolism. But the insulin sen sensitivity one um, is a big one. I know when I invested years ago, so this company doesn't exist anymore. It got bought up. But GW, I think we're called GW Pharmaceuticals. GW, uh -huh. um, they they are the ones they they had a drug that was fast tracked for a form of epilepsy. That's what got them known. Yeah, uh, Dravet syndrome, I think it was called. 
Um, this is when Charlotte's Web, that strain of uh, high CBD cannabis, became popular right. and it was grown in Colorado a lot. So yeah, I was going to ask because of like the the ratios and all that. Like, have they figured out you know the pairings of that? Because there's also like CBC, CBN, yep. and yep. there's other like variations. So THC has its own benefits, but it's the least. It's the one that's least likely to be used in medicine because of its uh, psychotropic effects. Right. Yeah. So. Like, you know, you want to take something for inflammation. You don't want to be high all the time. I mean, maybe you do, but most people don't. <laughs> uh, but, you know, there's some benefits to the psych psychotropic effects. There could be maybe some therapeutic effects and stuff like that. But they want to find the ones that affect you that have subtle, you know, maybe, maybe just make you feel better, but really have effects on inflammation, insulin sensitivity, anti-cancer. They're anti-proliferative with cancer. Cannabinoids have been shown. The first study, uh, I remember out of Spain, showed that it was anti-cancer in brain cancer. They showed it to be anti-cancer in liver cancer hmm. and other forms of cancer. So it's really interesting, but uh, with weight and fat loss and insulin sensitivity, there's they're, they're pursuing it. They're looking at it. And again, this the data keeps coming out. And it's weird because hmm. I remember when the first one came out, they thought, oh, something's wrong. Like, this, is, this doesn't make sense. Like, why are pot smokers have lower BMI? Then they did another one. Uh-oh, it's showing up again. Animal st studies are showing it. This doesn't, that's why it's paradoxical because they totally anticipated right. them to all yeah, be heavier. The stigma that's running. Now, I want to be clear. I don't, I think we all think that the, the science and the research around this is fascinating, fun to talk about. I don't think that you would recommend no. this as a, as a fat, as a fat burner, although no. it may come out this way, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, because more and more things now are moving in this direction and maybe it's not the best fat loss type of sup supplement, but we're starting to attach it to health benefits yeah. in general. Yeah. Do you foresee this as like a, you know, potential, you <sighs> know, multivitamin stack of like becoming more of a daily usage thing that somebody takes at a, on a lower daily dose? I think mm -hmm. it'll, it, I don't know if it'll go that far to where they give it to everybody, but I think it'll be very commonly used because, the, you know, the uh, endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome hasn't been identified, but it's been speculated that a lot of people aren't producing enough of their own natural endocannabinoids uh, because of stress, because of gut issues, because of uh, maybe toxins. You know, or toxins. And, and so when you produce less of your own endocannabinoids, well, the effects may be more inflammation, gut issues. Uh, you may have issues with sleep. You may have issues with anxiety and mood. Um, and so supplementing with like hemp oil, which isn't going to get you high. You'll notice it, by the way, if you supplement with, if you take Ned, you'll feel it. You'll feel yeah. something, but you're not high. It's not like you smoke it's a, a relaxed sort of calming. Yeah. You're like, wow, yeah. I kind of feel good. And you can tell it's not like a, like, do I feel something? Like you can, you can tell you feel something. I think a, a lot of people who have like, kind of just, just don't feel kind of good. They have inflammation. Their sleep is kind of crappy. Like this is, it's, uh, it's effective for a lot of people. I have family members. Okay. My dad. My mom, I have an aunt, my grandfather before he passed away, they were using Ned on a consistent basis. I get texts from my dad all the time. I'm running low, you know, and he always he always offers to buy it, but of course I'm not gonna make my dad buy it. I'm like, no, I'll give you some, but he uses it on a consistent basis. My dad's got um, you know, he's got lots of arthritis and, and joint issues just from hard labor working since he was a child. All right, today's giveaway is Maps Split. That's the program we're giving away. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now. Maps Starter. This is a beginner workout program. 50% off. And then we have a bundle that includes Maps Anabolic and Maps Prime. It's called the Starter Bundle. That's also 50% off. If you're interested in either one or all of those, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Dad's a savage, by the way. Oh, yeah. I, I heard he his uh, motorcycle crash story, and it just, like, blew my mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we were all in Hawaii together. He just, yeah, he just rolled his way through the whole thing. Yeah. And just because of his uh, judo background and everything, like, knew how to kind of fall through, but just, like, literally got thrown off his bike. 85 mile per hour motorcycle crash. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> At his age, dude, it, was, it was, like, a year or two ago or something. Yeah, like yeah. Dude, he broke his foot a little bit, but he, yeah. Uh, and it's funny because he, he tells a story to Justin, and he goes, and I'm in the street, and you know, I'm trying to get up, and people are like, don't get up. He's like, I'm going to get run over. Over, you know, so, yeah dude he, my yeah. we had an intervention my, my siblings all went to my mom afterwards to my mom's house 
and like, we're all like you can stop riding motorcycles. Yeah, you need to stop riding yeah. motorcycles. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Were you in? Not the, gonna happen. Were you in the thread when I was giving him when he was talking all sweet and appreciative of his parents and that shit all over it? The we're talking about my family to stop. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I saw that. No. Yeah, you didn't respond, yeah. so I don't know if you saw. I it forgot right. what I it must, was. Yeah, yeah, you were just me. you were just talking about how appreciative you were of your your parents and, yeah. and your family there, and I was I can't I was making a comment about. Oh, I was telling you, like they were asking, oh, they, asking. Wanted, they wanted to pay for everything. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 no. Like what you've done is, you know, been so much. Yeah, for you. I and took I, them to Hawaii. And I made a comment. I said, you tell them how much money you made for the last 10 days while you were on vacation. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 it's, you know, it's about this or like that. I, my family has done so much. I could never repay them. Yeah. And you were kind of like jabbing back at me when I was just like, you know, bragging to ha, yeah. telling you to brag about how much we made. So you shit all over my, my point. <laughs> and so I came back and said, well, yeah, I guess if I had your parents, I would say that too. Oh! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it sounds, like, so way, it sounds like weird. I don't know so I just dropped it is. the It's like my, my favorite way to make Dude, you feel like shit over here. What a dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I had a father. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude. Well, I guess my parents Killing me, me, dude. Yeah. What a jerk. Yeah. 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 No, it was all, no, I know. It was all fair, fair That's play. Hilarious. Yeah, you should. If, if we hung out a little more, Justin, I guarantee you at some point, my dad would have he would have told you some strength story or something like that. And then he would have done something. To show yeah. You. I forgot about that. Cause I, I would want to, I would like put him to the test. I want to see his, uh, um, he looks hair naturally strong to me. He's, 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 just, in a, he's in a lot of pain. Yeah. He's older. He's a fraction of how he used to be with that, but still. And he man, doesn't, cause he doesn't solid, lift weights yeah. or train. He just, no, he's like, he, you could so see that your brother got his genetics. Yeah. Like your brother has that same yeah. look. They just have this kind of build to them. They yeah. look like they can lift heavy things, yeah. yet they don't lift he heavy even things. Try it. Yeah. It just has it. Yeah. I told you like four years ago, my my oldest thought I was making this shit up, and he told my grand my dad. He's like, yeah, this, you know, dad tells me all these stories. He goes, I think he's making them up. And my dad has that old. He's like this really old, heavy, like solid wood uh, dining room chair or whatever. Yeah. And my yeah. dad goes, uh, I, I can you pick it up yeah. from the Watch leg this. on the bottom with yeah. your arm straight on the floor. My son's like, nobody could do that. My dad, you know, he does it. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> How did he do that? <laughs> yeah, my grandpa was a lot like that. Yeah. Same, same kind of cut, you know, of cloth. Like he, he would do the same types of things where he'd like show me something where he would just like crush, you know, like, like, like I was like a baseball or something. And he like just crushed it. And like, he, he could do things that like with his grip. Yeah. It was something about the grip back in the day was like a, a lot more emphasized. Like, especially when he shook somebody's hand, you'd basically like break. <laughs> I always, I always used to shake his hand. It felt like he was like breaking my bones. Well, they you know, I wonder, hands all I the wonder time. if that has to do with anything with that. Right. So we've, we've talked before about the huge decline in grip strength in men. And yeah. that's like one of the predictors for mm -hmm. testosterone levels, stuff like that. Right. I wonder if there's like a, uh, in addition to that, there's also less emphasis on that. Of course. Because you're right. The generation before, the firm handshake and That was their bench press. You it, know what it I mean? It kind of was. Like, like the handshake and like the grip, like that yeah. was like the, the signal. Arm the wrestling, strength. like arm wrestling was so popular when I was a kid. Yeah. When I was a kid, like the whole family, everybody, yeah. all, all the men in the family arm wrestled. That was like a thing. Like You don't see that anymore. Well, th look, listen, if you did, if you do anything manual, anything hard, yeah. if your hands are weak, I don't care how strong your arms are, your back, your leg, it doesn't matter. You have to be able to hold it. And everything they did back then- Working on your car back then. Well, that's what you I mean. would mess up your hands. He was the airplane mechanic in the Air Force. Yeah, see? so he was just He's like always all time. cranking, yeah, and doing stuff with his fingers, and you know, so yeah, I got him real strong. Yeah, well, my dad, you know, when he when he would like put mud on the on the because he did tile and granite and marble that stuff. He hold I don't know what it's called. It's got a handle and it's a it's a flat metal like square, mm -hmm. and you put the mud on it. S sca scalpel, scalpel. I don't scaffold, know what it's called, but you, you you hold it and then he scaffold. has a, he has a trowel on the other hand, which is like a, another flat rectangular thing. So he has a big pile of mud. It's like half a bucket of mud he would put on this thing, and he would take the the trowel and he would throw it on the wall and then spread it while holding it. Now when you're a kid and you see your dad doing this, it looks easy. Yeah, yeah. it it's looks like light. Cake. Yeah, like nothing. I was like, I don't know, 17, and I went to work uh, with him. I was helping him uh, do a family member's house. And uh, and I'm looking at him like, that looks easy. I said, but you know, I'm old enough to know that's probably not easy. And he goes, here, try it out. Yeah. First of all, holding this thing was exhausting because it's heavy, right. wet mud. And then like flipping it just and doing this stuff. Isometric load, yeah, just like the whole time you're doing it. It's funny we're bringing this up because I uh, – 
I was uh, putting Everett to sleep uh, last night, and uh, I was I was I found myself like watching this YouTube video. I was just like at home, and it just kind of came across. And it was these two guys. I don't know if it was from like Thailand or Philippines, and they literally like their whole YouTube is about they just make uh, huts and I've houses and of pools. Like and what, at, yeah. it was literally just out of the dirt. I see this. Dug the whole thing out. <laughs> yeah. This amazing modern looking like steps all the way down to this pool that they made. They had a running river nearby that they put like bamboo poles to like come all the way down, do all the plumbing to, to basically like uh, pump into the pool. And then they had like the hut they put like grass and everything for, for the top. It's like it, a dude, time-lapse it video. It's beautiful. And it's like, it was like, I was just sitting there. I'm like, I'm such a pussy. Bro, yeah. I, I know you're so motivated because I know you've seen the, the price tag for what it's going to cost to do your pool. <laughs> just like, I know he's, I know how that came up, bro. You're YouTube. Like how, if I did this shit myself, oh, no. what would it look like? What would it look like? Oh, guilty dude. Oh no. That's totally what That's that why is. Came up. That's a hundred percent why it came up. Hey, I was just showing him. This like, fool's look, like, God damn, we got to write a check what for, hard work looks like. We, you know, like he, we, were, we were just mesmerized. You're going to show the workers trying to build your pool. Oh, really? Look, these guys yeah yeah exactly <laughs> do that yeah. you guys got all these machines they, they just like had like uh, like a hoe and like some <laughs> fucking like shovel uh, and they yeah. made it happen you should dm them <laughs> it's probably yeah. a lot cheaper. like hey guys uh, fly them in <laughs> yeah, you know like, yeah, little tiki torches we'll do this oh my god that's like yeah i got i got stuck on that rabbit hole once they got crazy videos, bro. The shit they build. It's, it's insane. Bro, it'll suck you in. Watch. Uh, like, you watch it. I bet you in. that's how you came across it, though. I know you were, I know you were considering. Yeah, build like, your own pool. Did, yeah, what if I did this my, myself? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's no, hilarious. You know, I gotta, Not I gotta give uh, Sal you your credit where it deserved, right? Because I, I don't remember how long ago, and I don't remember if this was made it on air or not. But we talked about um, affirmative action. Oh god! And you predicted. And it was a, it was quite a while ago. Um, again, I don't remember if it, we made it on the show or not, but I know you did say this that uh, that's that's going to be gone. It's only yeah. a matter of time before it's gone, and uh, that's exactly what happened. Now, of course, there's some people that are up in arms about it and think it's crazy and ridiculous, but I, I wanted you to share your thoughts on it because it's something that you kind of foresaw a long time ago that it would that it would get thrown. Well, first out. off, California banned uh, affirmative action uh, in, in the 90s. In colleges in, in, in ninety. I want to say ninety seven or ninety eight. So hmm. we banned it a while ago, and on vote, everybody voted like this is ridiculous. Um, so this is a case that went to the Supreme Court. That's basically saying uh, that these the any these colleges that receive any federal funding, which is all of them basically, even the private ones can't use race as a way to, um, you know, admit people or not admit people. First off, I'll say this, literally, literally, people talk about racism, okay? It's one of the few remaining, affirmative action was one of the few literal, in its legislation, racist laws, meaning race is in the law or the legislation or- The, the description the, is in there. The description itself, meaning yeah. if you're this race, this is your qualification. If you're the, this race, it's your qual qualification. In fact, I saw a chart that showed that if you were Asian American. Oh, yeah, I saw this. If you were Asian uh, and you scored better than 99% of everybody else, yeah. you were less likely to get into a college than if you were African American and scored better than 40%. Yeah. Okay? Just to show the disparity based purely on race. Yeah. I think I'm so happy it got destroyed because- First off, people say it's not fair, this and that. No, no, no. There are far better metrics if you're trying to help with opportunity than race. So you're going to tell me somebody who's a certain color, regardless of where they grew up, regardless of uh, their education, how much money they have, whatever, that that is a better indicator than some certain other things. Like I'm the son of poor Immigrants. My parents were very poor. My dad went to second grade. That's how far he went to college. Okay. Because I'm quote unquote considered white and I didn't go to college. I don't care. But if I did, I would be in a different category than somebody else because of my race and Asian Americans, you could be an Asian immigrant, whatever, because Asians tend to perform so much higher in some of these tests they're because of their race gets, get scored. Uh, they have to score so much better or get in. And that was the case. The case was that it was discriminatory against Asian Americans. Now, I brought this up, not just to give you your credit, but I also, uh, I don't know if you heard the the episode with the all-in guys. I they, did. They talked about this, and the part that I thought was most interesting was how this is going to potentially disrupt and change, uh, you know, college applications altogether. Yeah. Meaning, 
this is also going to be the first uh, domino, basically, to really disrupt the way they recruit athletes and um, and also uh, legacy. W- legacy. Yeah. Thank so you. here's here's why I disagree with that. Neither one of those are protected uh, um, under the Constitution. So meaning, if you're a good athlete you get recruited to a college, you could have worse scores, but that let you in yeah. because you're a high performing athlete. Um, that's not protected. Now, maybe it doesn't look good. Maybe they're going to get attacked because. Well, so that was the argument that Chamath made was he, and he spoke to like a Supreme court judge who said that this is going to set lawyer. the table. It was a lawyer, Supreme court lawyer. Was it a lawyer? Fact. I thought yeah, it was yeah, a judge. Yeah. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Okay. So anyways, they made the case that this is this is going to set the table now for those lawsuits. Yeah. For someone else basically to say, now that I'm being discriminated against. Here you have this dumb kid who's getting into you know what, just because he can dunk a basketball and I and I you, can't. You know what the irony of that is, which is interesting, uh, maybe a little controversial, but it's not, just objective. Um, so people saying, oh, this is going to hurt in particular African Americans if we don't use affirmative action. Now let's eliminate uh, athletic scholarships uh, which I think will disproportionately hurt also African Americans because objectively they tend to be more that compete at that level in many of these sports. So I don't know how you can hold both sides of that argument, to be honest with you. Well, yeah, no, it's going to be, that's why it's going to be really interesting to see how this all shakes out. It sounds like it's going to disrupt how education is done completely with yeah. as far as admittance to to school. Yeah, no, the legacy thing I, I kind of hmm. understand, which is like, you know, I went there. So now you're more likely to get there. So are you pro that or not? I mean, this is also why I want to bring this up. I want to hear your guys' opinion on that because in terms of like alumni and like how yeah, much I, there, I feel like, like I have funding. probably like a controversial like like I feel like um, I I like that, and I know a lot of people probably don't like that. And the reason why I like that is I if I if I came from what I came from, I worked as hard as I could, I educated myself, I went went to this college, I got into Harvard as hard as it would be. Man, part of me, I would want that to be a little bit easier for my son because I killed myself to get right. there. And so I'm not so anti that as everybody else is because everybody, I'm sure, would think that like, oh, that's so unfair that yeah. your kid has a leverage. Well, he does because I fucking sacrificed a lot for him to do that. I want him to have a little bit of leverage. So, and if it was truly a private school, then I would think that would be fair. Now, where it becomes unfair, in my opinion, they're, is that they, they're federally funded. Yeah, there isn't. So really what a purely, I don't think yeah. is fair is that you have to pay taxes that go to helping my son get leverage the, to get and in. That the, part is where I don't. And that's think the it's argument fair. is yeah. that that I don't. There's very few that are 100% privately funded. The private colleges receive millions of dollars uh, in federal funding. So. When it goes like that, then the then the arguments can be made. The athletic one, look, you're a good basketball player, football player. You're bringing the college money, yeah. like you're a valuable asset. That makes sense to me. Or what? Like, okay, whatever. It's also a talent, by the way. It's not just the color. You're not born. It's not like color your skin, where you just walk in or you yeah, write a piece. Yeah, of paper. but again, again, that goes. That back, means you're actually that performing. Goes, I agree with that too. If it's private and you're not taking federal funds, but if you're taking federal funds, how's that fair to my son? Just because your son's my, my your son's going to be more athletic than my son the way it's going. Sure, maybe, right. No, so, I'm so, 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 <laughs> my, my, time, so, but my son maybe ends up being smarter, right? Right, and but your son gets to get into Harvard, and I have to pay tax dollars to to help him out because he can dunk a basketball, right. and my son gets a better test scores than yeah. yours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and no, I so I, so, I could see I could see an argument for that, but to, but it's it's not in the same category as purely based off of race. Oh, I agree with that too. Yeah. But By I mean, way, that's why the, I think that's why the lawyer was making that case was like, this is like the first domino to make the rest of those fall because it's going to be really easy to make a legal case yeah. against the athletes and the legacy, I, I just and the legacy I, students. I, 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 it would be the federal funding aspect of it that I could see being iffy, but race is a protected, um, you know, that's, that it is protected and it is literally racist to say, Oh, your, your score is this, but you're Asian or, but you're white or, but you're, whatever, or you're Hispanic or you're black. Therefore we can adjust the scores and, and do all this other stuff. By the way, people who are like, Oh, um, you know, uh, people of this color or people in this category don't, they tend to suffer from more of this other stuff. If you want to use a better metric, use like, did they grow up, uh, with money without yeah. money? Economics. Did, yeah. Um, a dad also, without a dad. yeah. Like yep. single parent household. Right. Like I, that makes more sense to me and I can get that. And then the other part is like, you want to talk about disparity, forget the higher education. That's bullshit. Don't look at that. Look at public 
elementary, public junior high, and public high school. You know, that was the first time mm-hmm. Jason Calcana said something on the show that I like 100% agreed yeah. with. I thought his, his opinion on the way that we should solve education and not only is the voucher direction yes. and make schools competitive, on, man. but also if you want to address disparity, you got to do it from K one kindergarten yeah, kindergarten bottom. up is yeah. where it begins. And and if you're not giving, I mean, it's crazy. I'm so, I, I'm so intrigued by this conversation too, because Katrina and I were just talking about this. Like, you know, I didn't start, I didn't start any sort of formal school until I was five. My son's been in school since two. Mm-hmm. And like watching him like right now and right now, one of the things that we do at the dinner table, uh, we we do a lot of like these like math problems and tracing and alphabet stuff. And I'm thinking, dude, I've been doing this with my son at three years old and four years old before he even gets to his first, like he's going to have such an advantage compared to what I had. And I struggled in school. School didn't come easy to me. Not And and I think that that is a, a major advantage more than anything else is the ability to be able to educate if, at a young age and get them started. Look, if you ever want to see a gross disparity, the kind that you're like, how is this even possible? Go to public schools, go to public schools. In, in an inner city, mm-hmm. go to one in a wealthy suburb. Right. It is the biggest disparity you've ever seen. And they're all publicly and they have no funded. Other option. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. And, and the problem is you have no choice. You live in this neighborhood, that's the school your kid goes to, whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's, and the, it's that's all, the biggest glaring problem. And it's all publicly funded. Do you know how much uh, a public school in California gets per student, per school year, on average? Yeah. Like $16,000 a month, mm-hmm. a, uh, excuse me, a year. A school year. Imagine if you gave that voucher case. to the parents Here, so and they pick could decide. School. Yeah. yeah, You know, pick the school your kid goes to. And then the school has to accept it because it's whatever. It makes it much more, that makes it much more fair. But basing things off of race, that's, I mean, that's the literal definition of racism. So I'm glad it ended. And, the, and it's so funny to me how people position it as being racist by ending affirmative action. Uh, it's interesting. Those people tend to be the racist ones because what they're literally saying is if you're this color, not if you grew up in this area, not if you didn't have two parents, not if you, if your dad or mom was incarcerated or you're, you, you grew up poor, not any of that. If you're just this race, then we need to lower the standards to let you in. Those are the real racist people, not the people who are saying you got to be you know, let in based off of your scores. And if we consider anything, consider your individual life and what happened there, not just, you know, the color of your skin. Yeah, yeah. Insane to me. So I'm glad yeah. it ended. Yeah, yeah. You guys want to talk about Title IX and trans or? No. <laughs> wow. okay. I, didn't, I didn't know if we want to keep going. Really, this really like, big Doug uh, Pucker up over there. Yeah. Or what? <laughs> controversial train. Bro, yeah. I, just, I just tweeted. I just retweeted. Wait, didn't that didn't that uh, girl actually just go through court? By the way, I don't know if you saw. Didn't the, the girl who refused to play, I think that's the one, right? Is, is that what's that, going on? Did, she got, she got, it went all the way to court, didn't? Yeah. Yeah, are you familiar with this, But I don't know where it's at right now. So I was, half joking yeah no oh you were i thought you were serious that's why you were like alluding yeah. to that no i mean i wanted to know if you if, if you guys had heard any like development so you remember the girl that i can't I wish I'm, I'm hoping my producers can save me right here because i i can't i want to make sure my facts are straight on like what, i don't think what, it's been heard yet but i think what it's, it's, what you know. college what college she went to mm-hmm. and she was the one who refused to play in the it in was the, it was a swimming right yeah uh, track was it track? <laughs> so I don't think it's that. I think, I think, it's, really, it I think it's either swimming or volleyball. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Or that's what I thought it was. Yeah. But I, I mean, I I know that court case just happened. So I was actually looking to ask one of you, hoping one of you guys that had followed it. So okay, so it's interesting you said that. I literally retweeted this insane article. Insane article. This is so crazy that we're discussing this. Someone wrote an article and said the re the, the same. The same people who tried to oppress women uh, are the ones trying to keep trans women from competing or something like that. Like it's it's still uh, the patriarchy and it's still oppression of women or whatever. I think this is so crazy to me. Again, like I said with the affirmative action, the real sexist people are the people who are saying that uh, that trans women – should be able to compete with biological women. There's no differences, whatever. Let them not go. acknowledging any of the differences. It's yeah, or in, the advantages it's so, or biology. It's so crazy to me that they're doing that because it's going to destroy women's sports. Well, it's crazy to me that like this, even a discussion like this, you can't have it without being attacked and somebody calling Stupid. you transphobic. It's like, wait, wait, we can't have an intelligent conversation around 
the, the the biology and science advantage that this that this person has versus this other person and just discuss is this the best approach to it like because i'm not necessarily saying i know the answer to like how we solve this i think i have some better ideas than what we're doing but i definitely don't know all the answers but just to have that conversation you get thrown in a category of being transphobic because you're we're discussing it i think no. that's ridiculous well, let's just make believe if, if you're if you're just going to dismiss the fact that you know there's differences there are characters there's characteristics biological characteristics that, that you know are completely different we have to be able to stick with uh, the actual science and biology in order to make decisions on what's fair and what's not that's what sports is and, what's and fair what's at not. least have a conversation about and, it. well yeah, look it's so crazy that we even have that look you can't erase the differences simply by changing your hormones you just can't if you're if you're you put me you shut my testosterone off you put me on estrogen yes things are going to change yes i'm going to lose muscle i'm going to lose strength i'm going to lose bone density but not enough to make it so that if it, like I was born a woman. Now, people always like to use this example of like, oh, that there's a woman that could squat 500 pounds, is stronger than you. And there's guys that can barely, you know, uh, do a single push up. But no, no, those are only extremes. They're outliers. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally yeah. speaking, um, it's not just testosterone that makes men uh, stronger. There's other things that also make us stronger and faster and that kind well, of stuff. Well, you also, the way to squash that argument too is, is you can't, you don't compare the strongest deadlifting woman to us, okay? You compare her to the strongest deadlifting man. And this and when, huge. And when you, and then strong, the strongest, the fastest, yeah. the, everything. When, when you compare the sexes like that, it's it's not even close. It's not fair at all. So No. And it, what it does is it shuts, I mean, it, it'll, the reason why there were categories to begin with is so women could uh, compete, so they could get scholarships, so they yeah, could exactly. have their own um, and they're going to race trying that. to elevate women to you have opportunity. By, so, by the way, so you the, don't see this argument. You don't see this argument with trans men. I know, I know. You don't see a, a bunch of dudes who are like, "Hey, I'm not competing because there's a trans guy." They don't do that. Why? Because they get their asses kicked. That's yeah. just. I mean, there may be an outlier here and there, but they just lose. So the so the so the fallout is happening, right? We're seeing these court cases. Yeah. Andrew says it's already there's already been several of them. It's only going to get crazier and worse. What's the outcome? What happens? What do you guys think? Uh, I think you, I think eventually well, they're going to have to, they're going to have to separate category. Yeah. yeah there has to, to be a, yeah, a different, uh, way to allow competition obviously, but it, it can't be, uh, uh, integrated. Like there, there needs to be separate categories. I mean, is it that, or do you just have to, uh, uh, um, compete in your original sex? Uh, I don't think they're going to do that because you do lose performance. I mean, you transition. do, but, that, but, but that's by your choice. That's your yeah, choice. Yeah, I mean, that's another choice. option. I mean, I feel like that that's the- That's true. It's that's, another option. That's I feel like that's the only option until there's enough to actually create a league. You think right, there's right. actually a big yeah, enough well, league that's, for that's trans women basketball or trans no, trans basketball? Like, right. I, don't, I don't see enough to actually create a league. to create, And that's why they can't do it that way. So they've got to go somewhere right now. That's kind of where that why we're where we are. So to me, yeah, not, exactly. I think, and I think that's where, numbers. where we made the mistake was thinking that, oh, this is the best place you know, to, to put them is where they are, what they identify as yeah. now. But I think the more fair way to place them is what you originally but, were. You know, and, and yeah. people need to understand this because the threat from a lot of this, the, how they're pushing it. And what I mean by pushing is like the same sports and this other stuff is, uh, is to women. It's not really to guys. Like, you know, if it, yeah. they like, like restrooms, separate restrooms. Okay. The whole, the whole argument, is separate restrooms. I, men don't typically feel threatened by going into a bathroom and a woman walks in. Right. Some women do feel threatened and rightly so. Like men are several times more likely to assault uh, women than, than vice versa. We tend to be stronger, more aggressive. We commit more of the violent crimes. Um, and people who deny like, oh, the threat thing, like that's the real reality. Well, so it's the women that don't feel threatened. laws is to protect people? Well, there's the, that, that's the threat feeling, right? I don't feel threatened. I, I could go in a woman's bathroom. I'm not going to feel weird. Woman going to a men's bathroom, she right. might feel a little, but oftentimes feel a little weird, threatened, right? If I walk down the street, if I go down a dark alley and I see a group of five women sitting, uh, you know, sitting down by the street, drinking beer, I'm going to walk by them. I'm not going to feel threatened. <laughs> yeah. Most women are going to feel maybe some threat or some fear, right? Rightly so. Like I, like I, there's, there's some statistics there that back that up sports. Those categories exist not to protect men. Men didn't create this, the, the category to be like, we don't want women competing us against us because we're going to, you know, we need our own category. It was for women. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is, is, uh, is, is 
it's it's women that are feeling some of the stuff and so and look rightly so we got to have a real conversation you know and it's not transphobic and other stuff no, it's just no I real mean, life yeah live and let live but at the same time we're talking about like sports and the integrity of the sport and, yeah. and i just think that it does need to be discussed you yeah. know speaking of of men committing violent crimes on women did i tell you what happened to my sister what yeah my sister cassie what happened? This just happened when we were all on vacation. She, in fact, it was the day before. I see a freak the shit out of me, right? Oh, no. So we're all getting ready to get, we're at, we're at the house, at the trucky house. I'm getting ready to get in the truck, Katrina, me and the, and the baby. And uh, my sister calls. And my sister never calls me. She knows to like text me first. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what are you doing? And so that, and then like she'll call. So just to directly call me, I, I look at it. Oh, that's weird. I'm like, I better answer it, right? Even though I was like in the middle of like loading the truck. So I pick it up and she's hysterically crying. She, and, and she's like catching her breath and she's just like, this guy tried to kill me. What? Is what she starts her fucking sense of. I fucking, right. I oh like my God. tell Katrina, get back to the car. I'm like, where are you? Where are you? I'm coming right where? And she's just, and she's trying to catch her breath. And I'm like, what happened? What's going on? Who's, where, where are you at? Who's by you? And she catches her breath and she tells me that this guy tried to run her off the road. Literally. Like, like a road rage thing? Bro, destroyed the side of her car, ran her off. He the actually hit her car? Oh, bro, slammed her car. What? She was freaked Did out. Did she oh get his God, license dude. and everything? No, no, none of that. Didn't get a description, license, nothing. Oh, so she was what a she was wedged between like a, a semi and another another vehicle that was driving really slow. And the guy behind her was like aggressively riding her ass and like coming up, kept trying to push her forward. So that she brake checked him. And after she <sighs> brake checked him, this dude comes over on the side, comes up, gasses it, gets alongside her, and fucking wham, slams her off the road, dude. Wow. God. Yeah, scared the shit out of her. Scared the shit out of me, man. She started it with this, someone's trying to kill me. Oh, my God, my heart's a thing, Now, man. does she That's live- Awful. She, she lives in uh, Nevada. Yeah. Does she Does she have a firearm? Does she carry? Because I know the laws are- So she does have a firearm. Um, and I, uh, at that moment, I didn't ask her if she had her gun on her or not. I mean, the guy, cause had, that would be, that would be legal defense, right? Cause that's a, that's, de that's a deadly weapon, a car. That's right. So they, so, she so yeah. Tom got there, her husband got there to make sure that when they filed the report that it wasn't an accident, it was a assault Intense. with a deadly, yeah, an yeah. assault with a deadly weapon. Like that's what they were trying to do. Um, and so it did get filed as that, but I mean, there was no, there's, I mean, the guy got away. I mean, there's, he, he hit her and shit. then took off. Yeah, I didn't tell you guys that. It was so, oh my so god! You just made yeah. me think of that with oh, yeah. like men terrible, acting man. out in violence. And you know, so dude, that. that's why. So I tell. I actually had this uh, a while ago. I, I this, know where you're going to go with. This I had this conversation with my daughter. Yeah, and I said, um, you may feel emboldened at some point to flip a guy off, get in his face, maybe slap a guy, and lots of guys won't do anything back. But it, but there's the occasional piece of shit that may, mm -hmm. and you could get very hurt. So I told her, I said, don't ever do anything um, and not consider that there may be a violent response um, from a man. I ever. mean, that, that, the exact thought that's went through my, I mean, obviously my sister is hysterical in that moment. The last thing I'm going to do is- Yeah, you're going to tell her don't yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, scold her or like that. And, and his response was not, she didn't deserve right, that. Right, right, right. 100%. But I mean, it, it really was like that away. I mean, I, I'm i careful of that, you know? Even being a male that I know can do some damage, yeah. you just never know what someone yep. what someone's carrying. And then you also have to consider this. When somebody is driving like that and has that kind of road rage stuff like that, you have no idea what happened in their house. You have no idea if they're in fuck yeah. it mode. They're right. in fuck the yeah. world. They could have a psychiatric break. They, they could have a, I mean, we've all had a day like this before where you are, you've crossed the line of what your limit is and you're going like the you're next mother. You're just looking for a reason. You're looking. I'm yeah. looking for the next motherfucker to cross a line with right, me. Right. And it's going to be his worst day because I've already had mine and I'm looking for a reason to get all this rage out. And if someone's already acting that way on the road, there's actually probably a high percentage that person is in that state of mind already. Yeah. So risking flirting with that when you're not protected or you're not with more yep. people is boy is that really dangerous i i you know i had it i remember years ago um when i was dating my ex-wife this was a long time ago she flipped off a guy that cut us off and i had a conversation with her and i said listen i said when you do that you're basically saying my boyfriend's gonna fight you because you don't know what the other guy's gonna <laughs> yeah. do so you ask me before you do something like that because it ain't going to be you that's going right. to you know have to trade hands with somebody. It's going to be me. You got to think of that when you do that kind of stuff. But yeah, I've had this conversation a couple times with my daughter. Yeah. I said, don't ever, don't ever think that a guy's not going to do something back to you just because he's a guy. A lot of guys won't. 
There's the an occasional one that will, but there's always that asshole out there. There's always yep. that piece of shit that'll do something and then you're going to get hurt. So, yeah, yeah. you know, be very careful. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> I saw one of you had the, uh, the recession, uh, notes up there and stuff. And I was curious to like what you've been paying attention to, like with what's going on in the economy, the housing market. Is that you Sal? No, uh, it isn't. But, uh, from, for, I have been kind of hearing that it seems like it's reversing. Yeah. Seems like things are coming out. That's what I think is yeah. So you, you that, but then also you have this this looming what might happen with some of these uh, loans, the Airbnb fallout. Have you read what's fifty percent drop of right? Air, Airbnb? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of people that used to play the uh, arbitrage game on Airbnb, which is basically where you uh, you rent from somebody else and then rent and then you Airbnb. Yeah, out. you Airbnb oh. out. Or, is that what's happening? Yeah. So there's that part of it that's having a massive fall. Then there's the other part of there. I think they're called. DSCR or DCSR, I'm, I'm probably getting the acronym wrong, types of loans, which basically you do not have to show income on, like the old, mm. like kind of old loans, where you just prove that it, the income. And because Airbnb was blowing up in the last four or five years, I could go get this property in, say, a random area, or let's use our example of Park City, what we have. And I could go, hey, this rents this a night times 70% occupancy over the years and that. Yeah. So I'll be cash flowing this much. And then they would they would approve loans, even if that person only made 40 grand a year. Oh, yeah. on Because of how much it potentially could make on the market. Uh, That's right. And those are falling out because of the decline in in the Airbnb. So they're not. Wow. They're not sure. what, what are the rules with that in terms of like, if you can't somebody let's say you're the owner of the house and like they're listing it on airbnb and like getting rent uh, i don't know what the ramifications are yeah, but it's illegal to do that without without approval so but you can do it, you could, it you can't be legal it can't be. so it's it is if you approve it so oh, approve it? yeah yeah so like our buddy lawrence i remember was was doing the arbitrage thing a couple of years ago over here on a property um, but he worked the deal out. Like he literally told the rent, the, the owner who wanted to rent yeah, it. I'll pay you the rent. Yeah. He says, I'll pay the rent, but I'm going to, I'm going to short term lease this. Well, I'm that gonna... makes sense if they're transparent with it. But like, imagine if you're like the, the owner of the house and then you look oh, at your you, listings there, bro. I bet that happens all the time. Right. I wonder I, about I that. I bet that happens a, a lot more than you hear about. I'm sure that happens. Cause I mean, we know as, as homeowners and or landlords, like, you know, it's not like you're checking up on every one of yeah. your properties all the time. And if you're collecting rent every month, that's you have right. No reason to go. Yeah, if you're, I mean, we have a company. I don't know if you guys know this. One of the uh, one of our Oklahoma properties that's that is uh, rented to us does that. So they they do arbitrage. That was that's their business. Is they little they rent from us. We get the the stable income for us of the rent. But they turn around and they they actually have a business that is that that specializes in finding like uh, engineers and companies uh, uh, that are uh, businesses that have a lot of employees that and they'll rent it. Yes, and then have people and then they rent they rent by, they rent the by the room to like that company. And if they'll, you're a landlord, like sure. You're paying me. Yeah, we don't we don't care. Like we I mean for us, as long as the agreement on the price per month was cash flowing for ours, that we're more in the long yeah. term game, not about cash flow for us. So it was like, hey, it's no brainer. Mm -hmm. We're cash flowing a few hundred dollars a month on that property. They can go try. They can risk trying to make thousands of dollars, right? As long as we get so our stable, trying to make our, a cream on top. Yeah, of that. our stable uh, monthly. That also brings up though why uh, that that was like one of our headaches when we first rented out. They try to. They had a hard time renting it out right away. Yeah. And so for like three months, they were losing money because they were in a contract with us to pay. And they tried to pull some shady shit with us, like over the, I, you know, the, yeah, the, the corner lot. And there wasn't a fence there and people driving over it. Mm -hmm. And oh, this, you know, we couldn't get the internet guy to find the address because it wasn't yeah, on Zillow. Trying to nitpick. Oh, they were. there, and, and I remember because Jerry manages this for us, right? And so I remember I'm, those days when Adam was super mad. And you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Adam's so all making off. sense so, now. Hey, those, those were some of those back. days. I was super heated about yeah. that because. I, I'm getting it from Jerry going like, hey, they're trying to sue us over this. I'm like, what? I'm like, that's not even possible. And then I like, I do a little bit of digging and go, oh, okay. I know why. Yeah, they're doing the whole yeah. they're playing that game. Yeah, they're playing that game because they're they lost a bunch of money in the first three months. Their whole their whole business is built off of leveraging that they yeah. can they can rent it out for more. If they lose three months of rent on us, they're gonna they can already chalk up the whole year not being profitable even if they so they do out. the nitpick game yeah, yeah. oh cover this so month we're hedge not gonna, it yeah. By, yeah yeah I'm like yeah. oh okay yeah. I see what's going and on Adam don't gouging play. Adam's the wrong guy to do that with <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> say hey so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take a left turn you I, I think I brought this up on a past episode I told you guys I was considering ketamine therapy did I tell you guys yeah about this? Mm -hmm. you did oh. so. 
Can I ask you how the therapy's going? Where are you at with that? Well, Sorry. So I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm going to pursue ketamine therapy. Oh. So ketamine therapy's approved, FDA approved. Yeah, this is done with here. doctors and therapists. So it's all legit. And so I, 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 I'm diving in deep before I sign up for this and, and see what it's all about. Fuck, this is remarkable. It's remarkable the, uh, how much ketamine improves neuroplasticity. <laughs> Literally, they could see it. They could see what the dentrites that come off the neuron mm -hmm. in a stressed brain are short under ketamine. They grow. Mm -hmm. And you have like this period of time after one session, it's like a week long, where your brain is hyperplastic mm -hmm. and you can influence changes, actual physical changes in the brain during that period of time. And so the way that it's organized, this is an eight week period. Once a week, you do the therapy um, under the influence of ketamine. And I was talking to this individual about its effectiveness and she's, she, she, she administers it and does it. And I said, so how effective is this? And she goes, uh, she goes, I have people who are uh, severe trauma. Like we're talking about like severe, severe, like think about the worst case scenario, abuse and that sure. kind of stuff. She goes, and after eight weeks, it's like, they're a completely different person. She's like, it's like years of therapy Wow. In like this short period of time. Now is your super ex crazy exciting. So, I mean, I've been, I've been hearing tons of stuff about that and, and we've talked all already about MDMA and, and psilocybin and stuff like that. Now, um, are you abandoning the other therapy or have you already abandoned no, that? No, no, you want to, you, you, I'm going to keep doing all of it. Um, and have you done more since we've talked last? I know we a little all, bit, but we then we were on the, vacation. Yeah, we all like on vacation. Oh, you mean the EMDR? Yeah, um, yeah, thank you, EMDR. EMDR. Because yeah, yeah. I, we've, I've actually, I don't know if you've seen, we've had several people that uh, have, at, they've asked me about your updates yeah. on how that's going because you had been sharing that with us. Yeah, the, I, I've done a couple of them. One of the sessions was so impactful that it really did change how I viewed certain things in childhood, like in a fundamental way. One session, so it was pretty remarkable. I'm excited to experience what therapy under the influence of uh, this, they call it a psychotropic. So it's not a psychedelic, right? Ketamine psychotropic of what that's going to be like. Um, the research on it is fascinating and remarkable. You know, you guys know that by the way, the reason why FDA is approving these now is because of all these continual wars that we've been in such mm. a high percentage of, PTSD. Uh, of suicide yeah, among trauma. soldiers because yeah. of, do you know what the leading cause of death of American uh, service people in you suicide, know, suicide. Yeah. Right? No, More of them die in suicide than in war. Um, so the it's government fucked. is like, we, and they see the data and they're like, all right, let's look at this because this is not, this is not working out well for us. Is it, uh, is it getting too personal to ask you what, you, what shifted fundamentally? Yeah. Well? Oh man. Yeah, I know. God damn you. Sorry. I'm just so fascinated. I'm so fascinated. I tell you all fair in therapy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I just leave all the, the listeners <laughs> hanging. <laughs> <laughs> but so still having then great, I guess the takeaway though is still having great breakthroughs. I mean, I, you know, still been incredible. Yeah. I mean, our generation stigmatized, I think a lot of, you know, kind of therapy and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I, the way I look at it and I stigmatized it myself to be quite honest, but the way I look at it is, um, if you're growth minded, then, uh, being able to self reflect with an expert or person who understands how to do that with you, I mean, you're just going to yeah. grow faster. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you want to be a better person then, uh, and my motivation is I'm a father, I'm a husband. I want to really be a good, especially a good father. So I'm like, all right. And I know I ain't perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So like, it's, I, it's such a super hack because even if you're somebody who's into, uh, reading self-help, right. And you are growth minded, you still have your own bias and you have a mm -hmm. lens that you see things through. And your friends you don't know and what family you don't know. have That's, a bias and a, and, a, and a narrative that they've already written yeah. about you. So, I mean, and, and, and that's not to knock self-help or knock being personal growth on your own, because I think either you can make a lot of headway just in that alone, yeah. right? I think you can have a lot of breakthroughs, but there still is this like filter that you look through because of how you were raised and just having an outside non-biased person help you reflect on that is paramount. The, the, the benefits yes. of that is, is tremendous. Yeah. But know? again, with these, with these substances, what they're finding is because emotions, especially strong emotions strengthen thought patterns. Okay. So if you had a scary thing happen to you, or like a lot of people don't necessarily have like a big trauma, but they have what are called little traumas, right? So it's like, well, I didn't, none of these crazy things happen to me, but 
you know, I was kind of neglected throughout most of my life, or there was a lot of, you know, it was kind of tumultuous when I was a kid or whatever. Those things can, when you think about them and really address them and talk about them, invoke those strong emotions. And it's, you can't really process through it because those strong emotions just strengthen that same behavior. So what these substances do, like ketamine, ketamine is a disassociative. So let's say something really bad happened to you, you get in a car accident, you almost die. You try to think about it and process it. All it does is bring up those emotions. Even though intellectually you can process it, those emotions still strengthen that visceral response that stays with you. So now every time you get in a car, for example, you get scared or you feel anxious or whatever. With, for example, ketamine, it disassociates you from that. So now I don't get that, uh, that yeah. feeling. You could like mentally reframe, but you can't like change what you feel. You still. can emotionally yeah. reframe. Now I can visit yeah. this scary thing and I don't get the same reaction and I've created a new pathway. Yeah. And then I can strengthen that pathway through, you know, repeated now, therapy. Now, how is that, Sal, different than psilocybin? Because that's actually one of the ways that I was, we were just, we had this conversation with one of our best friends and their married couple, good friends go back, way back. And um, we were sh expressing like we've used, utilized psilocybin for these. And I described it with that exact yeah. way. So how 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 are they different? Are they similar in that way? They're similar in in what they're showing in the studies, but they're different. Uh, they're different substances. Um, right, uh, they're yeah. very different substances. Yeah. So, but they're similar. Like the psilocybin studies that blow me away are the end of life um, ones, which are crazy. So people who are terminal, like you go to the doctor, doctor's like you're going to die in two months or three months. Like depression, anxiety, obviously skyrocket. They did a study with people who were terminal who did psilocybin therapy. I don't remember what the percent, it was crazy number. It was something it was like, like 80. The, I thought it was almost 90%. It was crazy. Yeah. It was like a ma vast majority. It was like 80 or 90% of them felt at peace. Yeah. So you're going to die in two months. Imagine how you'd feel. Oh my God, my wife, my kids, my family, my business. What am I going to do? What's it like? They came out of therapy at peace. Mm -hmm. How crazy is that? Nobody's yeah. ever been to show that with, yeah. those, with that type of stuff, yeah, except yeah. for maybe like really powerful religious experiences, um, which is what people are, are kind of equating it to. So that's why anyway, the, the research is going to be, uh, the research on it's pretty amazing. That's why so I, I suggest speaking of research, I want to bring this up because this continues to come up, um, uh, with people and protein quality and stuff like that. And, and I know this, we've hammered this home, but I want to say this. If a majority of your protein is not from animal sources, you're going to need more protein to do the same thing as the animal sources. Okay. So if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you hear us talking about, you know, 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight is optimal. You're probably going to need more like 1.2 of plant protein to equal the same benefits and studies just support this. So protein powders can be very valuable for a lot of people. If you're a vegan, you probably need a lot. You probably need a lot of, of, of vegan protein powders to get those benefits of protein. Now, is that because it's singly sourced or like, what about things like Organifi where they use a blend of different things? Better than single sourced uh, plant proteins. Still though, the assimilation of oh, bioavailability okay. is still better with animal sources. But yeah, so Organifi is a good, a good example. If you're a vegan or you don't eat a lot of animal sources of protein um, and you want to supplement with a vegan protein, Organifi is a great one and have two, three servings a day. Really boost your protein up with it to get those protein benefits. Because yeah. The, the beautiful part about that is that, uh, like my digestive system can handle two or three servings of Organifi yeah, me too. where I can't handle two or three servings Away. of whey. Yep. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. here. Same here for, for a lot of people. It seems to be easier to digest. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, Hey, so I have, uh, I have a good shout out for us, um, okay. today. Uh, and it's our, a good friend of ours. And I was blown away the first time. And then I'm now, I think, episode three that I've seen him in. And that's our buddy Robert Oberus on yeah. Righteous Gemstones. He's in the Righteous yeah. Gemstones? Isn't that dude, so cool? He isn't just in it. Yeah, he's a well, he's like got a role, dude. Yeah. Like a legit wow. has lines. Good for him. Is it? Yeah. I was like so blown away. Because I had seen like he did, did a post a while back when maybe he was doing some filming. Yeah, I'd seen him hanging out with the other actors. Yeah, and show. I thought, oh, maybe he just has some friends on the wow. set. Or maybe he's got, like, a, he's, you know, an extra because he's his his big massive physique, so they found a way to make him like a cool extra or whatever like that. And no, dude, he's got like legit role. Yeah, super excited for him. He's man. a great guy. Yeah. You should follow him on it. If you don't yeah, follow that awesome. guy, oh, he's, he's a world's strongest man competitor. He's a giant. He's also super nice guy. Fun, 
Great dude. He's the only we, guy that's made me feel like a little baby. He picked you up. I remember and you guys already picked me up and threw me in the pool. Yeah, and, and we almost just, like slammed my I head have that. I still have that picture. I'll, I'll, I'll share that with Andrew for the By YouTube By the way, we created uh, Map Strong with Robert Oberst because he's a world's strongest man competitor and we wanted to bring him to get like a strong, a real strongman perspective yeah. on how to program that workout. It was actually written with him. So Yeah, this is how he became friends, right? We all hit it off so much yeah. After, yeah. after that and have remained in contact. So probably due to have him back on the show, but shout out to Robert Oberst. I think it's so cool that uh, he's on Righteous Gemstones. Legion is a company that makes excellent athletic performance enhancing muscle building fat burning supplements these are the best hardcore high performance supplements you'll find anywhere um, and they're legit go check them out go to buylegion.com that's b-y-l-e-g-i-o-n.com forward slash mind pump use the code mind pump and get yourself a discount all right back to the show first caller is noah from maryland what's up noah how can we help you Hey guys, uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, I know now is usually when people tell you how much they love the show, so um, I'll skip that. But uh, <laughs> you know, um, I, I love you guys. I love listening. I love your programs. Um, I've, uh, I'm 29 years old. I've got about a 15-year training background and mm -hmm. uh, started listening to the show. I liked it. Ran a handful of programs back to back to back, and I've gotten as strong muscular lean as i have in that time and most injury free so awesome thank you all for that um can i give you a uh, quick compliment with a little bit of detail about split because i feel like it doesn't get enough love yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. sure all right i don't want to give away any secret sauce but i really like the way it uh it's the um double split and it mixes a little bit of bilateral uh barbell work for each and then uh comes back around unilateral and more split stance on the second time around for each push pull legs in the week. I just think that's really cool. Yeah. Key Thank part you. of the programming. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Um, anyway, I just went through a phase of uh, training a little bit like a maniac. I had a ton of free time on my hands. I just finished PT school, passed my board exam and started up my own um, first job as a physical therapist yesterday, actually. Congrats. And, um, yeah, thank you. And so in that downtime, I kind of took it as an opportunity to really push myself. I had all the free time in the world right before I'm about to have none of the free time in the world. Um, and I'm worried that I had great results, um, progressed towards all my goals, but I'm worried that I got myself in the trap of doing that with a lot of increased volume and intensity. And if you guys have any tips for ways to not regress now that I'm going to have to pull back on the amount of time that I'm spending in the gym and focused on my fitness goals. Yeah. Well, so there's a myth, uh, that I believe for a long time in, when it comes to fitness and it goes something like this, like whatever you do to get in shape, you have to keep doing to stay in shape. That's actually false. Right. It's actually false. The amount of, of volume and intensity and frequency that someone is, uh, may need to build muscle or progress is much more than the amount that that person would need to do to maintain. So you could probably cut, and this is the data supports this, okay? Data you, supports one-seventh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could go way down. You could cut your volume in half, and you're not going to lose anything. Yeah. You might lose a little bit of stamina and endurance, because uh, that that might suffer from the reduced volume. But in terms of strength, muscle, how you look, you're not going to lose anything. If, if anything, knowing what I know about fitness fanatics, knowing what I know about human behavior, you may actually progress by cutting your volume down uh, in half. Um, all things being equal. So I wouldn't worry about it. I would just follow a program that has less volume, less training, one that fits your schedule. Um, and then that's it. I, and, and you're probably going to be, not only are you going to be fine, you might actually do better. Ideally yeah. knowing what you're about to head into, because I do know how rigorous the, the schedule can be for a PT. Uh, I'd have maps anabolic and maps 15 in my arsenal. And I think scaling back to maps anabolic uh, is going to do a body good, probably feel good. But if it gets to a point where even three, full hour workouts in a gym becomes too hectic for you or too much on your crazy schedule, then maps 15 is a, is a great default to that or toggling back and forth between when you have crazy loads, you kind of do more of a maps 15 type of routine. When you have weeks or stretches, when you have less of a load, you can get after a maps and a ball up. But I think having those two at your disposal will probably be two of the best programs to have in your arsenal. If you don't have those already, do you have those? 
I have uh, anabolic, but not 15. All right, we'll hook you up yeah. with 15. So you got 15 now yeah. too. What is your okay. What is your workout schedule look like now, and what do you think it's going to look like in terms of time? So I can what it did look like right at the end is I really ramped up. But the most I could equate it to would almost be like peaking for a bodybuilding show, which I wasn't doing, but it was like that kind of level of spending time. I was spending a few hours in the gym. Uh, getting home, making myself some food, walking after I ate, doing some chores around the house, try to keep moving, eat again, and then walk again. And that was pretty much my day. So there wasn't a whole lot of anything else going on, but I had nothing else going on. Now, um, my schedule with physical therapy, I'll be doing two 10 to 8 shifts and two 7 to 3 shifts. So I'm trying to figure out if I'll do mornings on some days, evenings on other days, or maybe take some rest during the week and pick up the weekend days instead. Map, you're, you're fine. Map's yeah. anabolic. You know what? I, if you didn't tell me anything about your new schedule, I would still tell you to do Map's anabolic because what you were doing before yeah. was probably too much. You got away with it because you recovered, but I bet going back to Map's anabolic, you're probably going to see progress. You're probably going to build muscle and strength. So I would right, do that. Absolutely. That's that's three days a week. That's three days a week in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. And as I mentioned in, in my question, um, what I did before was intended only to be a very short-term push and then get away from it. I would never do that uh, long-term. I did have one thing to add, you know, I've heard you guys talk about how you don't need to train as much to maintain strength and muscle. The specific um, backslide I was worried about is actually putting on body fat because I got myself used to staying lean through using a ton of movement, which I know is a trap. And now I'm worried about, um, you know, continuing to hit protein, but dropping my calories so that I don't lose the muscle, which I know I can keep, but not being in a calorie surplus when my activity is so much lower. Do you know how much you were, do you know how much you were hitting uh, calorie wise during this time of like super high activity? Where are you at? Based on the times that I've tracked before, I was probably around 200 grams of protein and probably 3000 calories or so. And I was, I was building strength and dropping fat in that time. You know, it'll probably happen <clears throat> is I would say, don't change your diet yeah. yet. I would go yeah. maps anabolic on your days off. Just keep track, you know, try to pay attention to how much you walk. So maybe do a few walks a day, you know, 15 minute walks. And what'll probably happen is it'll probably feel more muscle growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you're, I don't think you're too high a cal. I, no. I would have said if you were like 4,000, I'd say, ah, oh, just drop your calories, five to 600 calories while you're, but at 3000 calories and you were getting leaner and building muscle. Yeah. You're probably, you're probably yeah. going to just build more. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was in a cut intentionally. Okay. Oh, yeah. it was, yeah. I would keep it the same then. Yeah. I, I wouldn't change okay. it. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're gonna be fine. Yeah. I think you're gonna okay. be just fine, man. All right. Well, thank you guys. Oh, can I have a, put in a quick question about bands? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I was considering looking into bands just for future use, nothing now, but, does that require any gym equipment on top of bands or is it like even things to anchor to, or like, would they be around a barbell that I'm pressing or is it just pure band work? Yeah. Pure, ideally. Pure band. Yeah. Pure band work, but ideally you'd have like a pull-up bar or, uh, okay. uh, we also use like a, a bench. I tried not to like incorporate a bench. So there's ways around it, but, um, those, those would be the only two items like, uh, in addition to just having a band. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Thanks very much. And uh, Justin, thank you for all your hypertrophy and fat loss input. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your question. It was very relevant for me. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm here for you, bro. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, all right. Thank you all. Oh, Thanks. um, Sal, one last thing. Uh, when I started listening, I wanted to uh, tell you this. Probably really the awesome. hardest I've last laughed in the last year or so was your story about going into the woods with a milk jug and a barbell yeah. and squatting so you couldn't go to school the next day. <laughs> yep. so. True story. Painful yeah. story. <laughs> you did fun All stuff. Right, well, I don't know. His pillow fights you. was the funniest for me. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I like the shitting outside. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> that was my favorite. All right, Noah. Thank you, brother. Thanks, hey, we'll send, that over, right. we'll send that Matt 15 over to you, brother. All right. Thank you. Have you. a good one. You got All it, right. man. Yeah, uh, that's, this is a hard one for people to believe that they can do less. This is for fitness. Finance, no, I didn't okay? know that. I know. <clears throat> and you know, what's fun. I, I still, even for me, like I, I literally, so if I'm training and I'm pushing volume, I'll do between 16 to 20 sets per body part per week total. Okay. I recently dropped everything down to nine sets. So that's 
pretty significant drop. That's like half. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is happening? Progressing. Yeah. Like every time, you know? So um, it, 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 it's usually that you're overdoing it and doing less will probably get you better results. But at the worst, doing less maintains. Not to mention, when I, I know I don't remember, recall what the, the group in that study that referred to the one-seventh to maintain yeah. what their training experience is. But I would speculate that as that compounds, so do the results and the and the ease of being able to maintain. Meaning, when you get someone like him who's been training for 15 years consistently like that, or like us, 20 plus years, it, it just gets even easier to maintain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I were to have stopped or fell off when I was 21, and I had like you know made minimal gains. Well, there's not a lot to maintain because I haven't gained a lot because I had just started. But as you progress through years and add more and more training volume, add more and more muscle to maintain that becomes easier and easier. So a guy like this, I think he's going to be surprised when he reduces down to like a MAPS anabolic program. He'll probably stay just as fit or maybe even get fitter by He'll doing definitely that. Definitely is stronger. I, I could guarantee. Yeah. Next caller is Alicia from Ohio. Hey, Alicia. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for having me on here. I've been listening to you guys since I started even touching weights. So like you've helped me throughout my journey of not even doing anything to now why I'm here. Awesome. Um, so I'll give you a little background. I've been doing your guys's powerlifting program. Um, I've ran through it twice now. Um, so I've been powerlifting for about two and a half years, training for about three years in that direction. Um, the first time I ran it, my squat went up tremendously, like 15 pounds. Bench went up. It was great. Deadlift did not change at all. Um, and then the second time I ran it, um, I was doing like a bulk through both of these phases back and back. So within that bulk, I like gained like 10 pounds and everything um, weight wise, but my deadlift didn't increase. It actually, like I couldn't even pull my one rep when I tested it just now. And then my squat went up like five pounds and then bench still goes up five pounds. But my basic question is, is with that and kind of being more experienced and everything, is there a way I can modify your guys's powerlift program to gear it towards increasing the squat and deadlift and kind of breaking through that plateau or anything like that? Let's talk about where you're at right now. First, where are okay. you at? Where are you at in those three lifts? Uh, so bench is about 240 right now. Whoa. Wait, 240 you can pounds? bench 240? Yes. Holy no shit. Way. That's well, a, that's I, already, I already have an idea what's going yeah, on. Anyway. <laughs> keep going. Yeah, anyway. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep number. <laughs> yeah. We wrote these programs too effectively, Good guys. Lord. <laughs> what's right. the next? Yeah. What, are you, what, right. what are you squatting? Uh, squats, they're not as impressive as the bench. They're only like... 330 is what I hit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> okay, that's good. And What's your deadlift? Deadlift is stuck at like 309, uh, okay. 310 maybe if I'm pulling like good. But like when I just tested it, I, could, I couldn't even lift like 295 okay. off the ground. So wow. How, that's kind of where the numbers are. great numbers. Right How old are you? What? I'm 27. And you've, been, and you've been powerlifting just for a few years? Yes. Yeah. These are Do you great. remember what you lifted when you first started? Um, when I very first started, like ever touching a weight, like just the bar would bruise my back. Like, and that was <laughs> oh like about God. four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. yeah you, so, you so here's, so killing it. this is when it gets, this is when the stuff gets, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. fun, but also potentially frustrating. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's fun because you're legitimately stronger than 99% of the, of women in the world. Okay. That, those are, those are numbers that I, I mean, I trained a lot of clients. I never had a female client that could lift that much except for like super high level yeah, competitive. Especially bench. Yeah. Like that's insane. Your bench press in particular. I don't think I've ever seen a woman bench no, that's, that I've trained uh, that's in that realm. You massive. should check out like Jen Thompson. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that people there, out but, there. Yeah, but my point is not, you should not, not actually always, check yeah. her out. You should <laughs> not. Yeah, exactly. No Why compare? Yeah. You're talking about a one in a million yeah. person, maybe my, one my, in 10 million. My point is you're really strong. You've gotten to such a high level yeah. it's, that it's really hard. Everything's incremental now. It's really hard to progress um, from here. So, mm -hmm. okay. So you follow maps powerlift. This is the second or third time through second time. And then do you do anything in between? Um, normally I take like a week off of rest. Okay. Um, Symmetry. Do you have a, it. do you have a specific competition coming up or something you're training for? I do have something coming up in November, November 15th. Oh, that's time. Um, so I'm time. Yeah. hoping to get one more cycle in before then. Okay. So, so here, now here's, the sticking point oftentimes for people at your level 
has to do with um, imbalances, technique, mobility. Mm -hmm. You tend to improve some of that with someone like you, um, and you start to see some some power output uh, improvements or increases. Like uh, unilateral training yes. would probably benefit you really well. Now, during that period of time, you're not going to be lifting nearly as much as you normally do. And then when you go back to bilateral, you might initially find mm -hmm. that your strength is lower, but then because you've corrected certain imbalances uh, and, and improved your symmetry, right, from left to right, then you'll see mm -hmm. that you'll surpass um, some of your old lifts. I think you 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 that would probably do you really well. Yeah, I'd love mm -hmm. to see her run symmetry Absolutely. right now and then go back to power lift. Yeah, yeah, the problem is time, though. I don't know if she has enough time for well, that, Well, that's, right? okay, we have, we're in, what, what are we in, June? We're in June. Okay, June, end of June. July, August, September, October, November. So you could technically go like symmetry right now. And then when she goes to the five by five, instead of going to the five by five in symmetry, go right go into right power into lift. Power so lift. skip yeah. the last phase of symmetry. Yep. And then get back into power lift. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you? Where do you? Now let me ask you this. Uh, obviously, you you you're you're strong. You've been doing this for a little while. Where do you feel the sticking points are for you? And do you feel pain anywhere? Like when you deadlift a lot, do you notice any issues? Um. Like, um talk me through so this. So I, I have had some like lower back pain, but um that was. Hmm started like a year ago. So I've been training the core mostly to like help that Good. um and kind of stabilize that. And I've adjusted my technique in order like I don't feel that anymore. Okay. Um I but that was like previously and then it's just like getting it right off the ground is kind of like you pull sumo? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I pull sumo. Yeah. Sticking point for sumo is usually and right you there. said you've you've experimented with deficit deadlifts a bit. Yes. So this previous time, um, when I did the first phase, I did, uh, deficits with like just the smaller, like 25 pound ones that you see, like at the commercial gym. Um, mm -hmm. that was like about how much of a deficit I did. And then I just kept loading those up for those there you go. for the first yeah. phase into like about halfway through, um, power lift. You can also do pause. So mm -hmm. where you get, you take a weight that you can lift lift mm -hmm. it two or three inches off the floor, pause for four or five seconds, and then finish mm -hmm. the lift. So you're pausing about two inches or two to four inches or two to six inches off the floor. And then, lift. so you have to go lighter, much lighter to do that. Um, yeah. But that'll help build the the strength and tension yeah. in that lower part uh, of the rep. But I mean, single leg deadlifts and Bulgarian squats, yeah. I mean, are going to be fantastic for you just for like strengthening and stabilizing around your, your hips and, and everything else. And it's just... That's one of those things that uh, I think a lot of powerlifters don't really consider. And then if if you spend enough time there, really strengthening that, it, and then go back, it's going to be, hopefully, it's going to be a mind blowing that, thing. That would be my recipe with you going forward. Would be to interrupt after every like, let's say you do a meet, then right after a meet, I would run symmetry and then go back to powerlift, yep. and then I would run symmetry and then go back to powerlift and run symmetry. That would be like a good formula. You can even do mass performance. <laughs> uh, you know, that's another program that might benefit you because you're at the level now where your limiting factor uh, is not is it has more to do with um, like these small imbalances or your body protecting itself because you're lifting a lot of weight. So if there's yeah. a little bit of instability and your body senses it, you're losing power, you're losing strength. You're going to prevent yourself. Now, what a lot of power lifters do is they try to push past it. This is when they start to get injured. Yep. Um, and you're in injury territory. I don't mean in, in the sense of your, your technique is off, but you're so strong that if your form is off a little bit, like if your form was off a little bit and you were squatting 100 pounds, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you're squatting 300 pounds yep. as, a, as a female. If your technique is off a little bit, um, the risk of injury goes up quite a bit. Magnify it. Yeah. So we're going to send you map symmetry. Don't do the last phase. Just follow the first okay. few phases. And then when you get to the last phase, switch back to mass power lift. And I'd love to hear back from you. Oh, yeah. I'd love to hear back yeah. from you and how, how you feel and how, how it all worked out for you. Of course, that would be awesome. Thank yeah. you, guys. No, and, and, and yeah, you're crushing it, man. Yeah. Yes, that's super yeah, impressive. Congrats. Yep. Good job. Oh, yeah. My goal is to get to nationals in my federation. So I have a while to go because my weight class, they're lifting like 500. Um, wow. For like, that's very, very top, but it's mm -hmm. like, for like 400 would be like getting me there. That's so incredible. I got still some ways to go. You, and you're young, yeah, you, you know, you top, get it. you're young, like power lifters peak in their mid thirties, you know, sometimes forties. I mean, you got, you, you're, there's, there's a lot of strength left in you. Oh, we're watching a video of you wow. squat more weight than Adam. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah good job. Right. Uh, great job. Thanks yeah. for calling. Thank yep. you. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Represent, huh? 
Yeah, I'm glad to. Thank you. You know, uh, I didn't realize this. I'm so glad I asked I, before we started giving This advice. is something I didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't realize that with all these people buying our programs, we're literally making everyone stronger than us. <laughs> like seriously though. Yeah. I, like, she, I don't she's think, never touched weights. I don't think Listen I've, us I don't think I've ever had crazy. a female bench over 230. I don't think I've ever had a female bench. I'm trying to think if I even had a female bench 225. Like 225, yeah. Yeah, like two, two plates. plates. No. I, I've, I haven't seen that. No. Yeah. Honestly, except for like. I mean, obviously, because the competitors they're, do they're it. Out we're there. talking about like in the, the real yeah, world. No, no, no. Steffi yeah. Cohen's and all them. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm not exist, counting but... like fucking super high level anomalies. I'm talking about the thousands of people combined that we've all trained and seen in the yeah. gym. Like, yeah. you just, that's in, those are incredible numbers. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, Incre yeah. And squatting over 300. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievably yeah. impressive. Yeah, I mean, when you, when you get to a really high level, uh, it, the 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 higher the level you get, the stronger you get, the harder it is to continue to progress. And yeah. little small changes make a big difference when you're at that level. Well, especially when okay, so like, and you know this too is like when you keep when you're like very PR focused. Yeah, you know you've been training for a long time, you've been super consistent, you're you're squeezing out every last bit, and then you like slept was good, sleep was good, nutrition was good, yeah. program was perfect, yeah. boom, you hit a PR. Boy, it's hard just to replicate that yeah, that's again. That's right, that's right. It's hard to even come back, and, like, and that's why she's feeling that. She's like, ah, man, I can't. I was just pulling 295, like yeah. even though she knows she's done 309. Well, yeah, that's because you got all the stars to align to hit this PR, that's right. and just to replicate that is very difficult to do, much less, you know, exceed that. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, no, she's... <laughs> At a, at a frustrating place, but an amazing place. I think it's if, so impressive. I think if high-level powerlifters all did uh, like at least 30 days, but probably more like 60 days a year, okay? Of unilateral. Yeah. Just 30 to 60 days a just, year. Just to break it up. Of unilateral training, they would all see yeah. such, I agree. so much better results. All right. Next caller is Nicole from Florida. Hi, Nicole. How can we help you? Hi, how are you? Good. Okay. So um, first off, I think y'all are awesome. Um, I listen to you every single day when I walk my dogs around my neighborhood. Um, I love the fact that you are starting to, at least the podcast I've listened to are more geared towards women, which I think in every podcast I've heard, um, you don't have a whole lot of women followers. Um, and so being a woman and I've been in the fitness industry for 12, 13 years, um, I, have constantly been trying to build muscle, but there's only so much you can find out there um, to help help do that. So I guess my main question is, is there a way to um, build more muscle um, as a woman to get more past that, um, what women don't like that bulky phase? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So this is really about the, the kind of the mental. Yeah psychological blocks uh, that you may have with the the size thing growing, right? The, the mm -hmm. best thing that I've ever done, well, there's two things that I did to communicate this very well. By the way, I read in your question that you're a trainer and a coach yourself. So I'm assuming you're asking this question uh, to help you coach other people. Is that, is that what this question I is? I mean, for? I'm, I'm not one of those trainers that walk around and say, I know everything. I believe fitness is always evolving. Um, I'm always learning. Um, I'm open to learning. I don't know everything. Um, so yes, it's more knowledge for myself and for my clients, but I mean, I get the typical, I train a lot of women and a lot of them come to me and say, I don't want to look bulky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. That's still very common. One of the most important skills that you can have as a trainer or a coach is your ability to sell your ideas to your clients. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and so what does that mean? Right. So like, obviously, you have the answers as the expert. Someone hires you. They want to get more fit. They want to lose weight. You have the answers, or at least you have more of the answers than they do. The challenge is getting them to, to follow them, to trust you, to follow the process, to trust the process, because it doesn't happen overnight. So how you communicate what you're trying to get them to do is everything. It really is. You have to sell them on the idea that they need to eat more calories. You need to sell them on the idea that they need to lift heavy weight and do compound lifts and avoid excessive cardio and all that stuff, right? So the most effective ways that I was able to do this was one, focus on the metabolism boosting effects of muscle building, okay? Because mm -hmm. what I'm doing essentially is telling the person it'll be easier for them to be lean, okay? Because a lot of female clients, that's their number one. They just want to get lean. They don't want to be, they don't want to have a lot of body fat, but you're telling me I need to eat more calories and lift heavy weight? Like what does that have to do with body fat, right? So I sell the metabolism boosting effects. That's what I focus on. And then the second thing I focus on is their strength. 
how strong they are in the gym. And we just celebrate that strength. Now, why is that, mm -hmm. why is that second part so effective for women? Well, a, a lot of people don't know, especially men don't realize just how disempowered a woman can feel when trying to do certain things in everyday life, lift a heavy luggage or move some boxes. And all of a sudden, when a woman who's never lifted weights before starts to get stronger, she finds that she could do these things that were really that were really hard for her to do before, and it feels very empowering. It's an amazing feeling. I can't tell you how many times I had female clients tell me getting stronger made them feel more empowered and secure in their own bodies. So that's it. Mm -hmm. I would focus on boosting the metabolism and, and feeling strong, the feeling of being stronger, and celebrate that. And if you do those two things, then usually you can move them along. Now, if they, if they mention that they feel bigger, that they feel tighter, then you got to defer back to the metabolism boosting, defer back to getting stronger and let them know this is part of the process. As we speed up the metabolism, it's going to be so much easier for, be, for you to be lean. You'll be able to eat more calories, maintain a lean body fat percentage. So this is the process. I also think that there's, there's, this is where I find a lot of value in the, the, kind of the picture that I like to do. I like to take, I like to have my clients take this like front side back shot first thing on Fridays, every Friday morning. And I always tell them, you know, give me, give me like these one month shots of just trusting the process of, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to take you to the place you want to go. And what they see is like, they compare their getting bigger to their, you know, their thighs filling out and their jeans and their jeans are getting too tight or their, the shirt they used to wear and now their arms are filling out. And they right, right away think that they're, they're getting bigger or putting fat on. But what is happening is we have you in a calorie surplus. So you're, you're filling out your muscle bellies more. Let's take a look at the picture that we took before we started this process. And then let's take a look at the picture that we did 30 days. And yeah, your jeans are fitting tired, but look at the shape of your butt and your legs like you look better. Yeah. We're, we're sculpting your physique right now. I can't sculpt your physique. If we're always in a calorie deficit, I need those calories to help build you the physique that you're telling me that you want, but that's a process. And part of that process is us first building the muscle and building the metabolism and then doing what Sal is saying afterwards, then I'll reduce calories and cut you and then reveal all the hard work that we've done. And a lot of times when I have so that, for, so for like, I get, I understand that for clients, but when it comes down to like myself, I'm probably in that 5% of women that actually want that bulkier, bigger build. Like I have hit kind of hit that plateau and want to move past that. Oh, let's go. So, calories. Yeah. Calories. Yeah. yeah. Bump your calories. Yeah. And, and, and I lift. Mean, is there like a standstill to women, how much they can potentially build? Of course. Sure. Mm -hmm. Of course. How long have you been lifting? Uh, how long have you been lifting weights or strength training for Nicole? So I started lifting when I was 18. I did my first NPC competition when I was 20. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in, in between three years of bodybuilding. Um, I was in figure and then took it to powerlifting. And that's kind of where I found my love and what I really noticed my body responded well to. Um, so combining those two both, I noticed that during my bulks, which typically um, I do more mini bulks than these big calories. So I just find that it works better for me. Um, and of course, living in Florida, we're in bathing suits a lot longer. So feeling comfortable <laughs> being out in a bathing suit and not feeling that fluffiness. Um, I just feel like I've hit that plateau and can't get past, um, so maybe it is more, I need to go on a longer bulk or more calories. Yeah. yeah. I, hear, I hear a couple of things there, right? Yeah. So one, yes. Uh, I mean, you're advanced, right? You've been lifting consistently. I mean, you've you competed at the pro you've, level. Yeah. Almost, you've com yeah. yeah. You've competed. You've also done powerlifting. So you're, you're, you're definitely starting to squeeze a lot out, um, the other thing I hear is, you know, maybe you just, you really start to get a little fluffy and then you go reverse back out because psychologically to the point of being in a bikini right. and not feeling comfortable getting a little fluffy. What body fat percentage do you stop that at? Do or you, weight? Like or weight. Your, do you know what your body fat percentage is um, when you do that? I mean, the, I kind of go based off of like my floor scale. I haven't done like the calibers, but I kind of know where my baseline is with that. Um, I kind of stop around the 28 to 29 area. And then I also try to focus more on my strength too in the gym. Like once I haven't, like once I notice my strength has stopped, that's kind of when I start to say, okay, I need to now start to cut back down. I mean, you're, you have 
dieted at the competitive level. So you, as well as almost anybody that's at that, I know, understands how to cut, how to get shredded, how to do that. I may play with a little bit. Like if you were my client, I'd, I'd probably stretch you a bit and go, let, let's see if we can put a little bit more weight. Let's not worry about exactly what the scale is saying. Let's push your, your bulk a little longer. Let's increase okay. the calories a little more. Uh, knowing that you have the tools, you know what it takes to get shredded if you have to. So if you say you give yourself on the scale to 30 or 32 or your weight five pounds more than you normally would, allow yourself to do that. See how your body responds in the gym. Maybe that's all it needed was that extra additional calories for a longer period of time to start to see strengths go back up and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. knowing that we can always come back down. So I would probably push you in that direction, trying to do that. Also, uh, how, I mean, you're a trainer sometimes, and we, we forget to ask this sometimes because we just default that coaches are programming, know what they're doing. Uh, do you follow maps? Have you followed our programs? Um, just one. I did uh, the, uh, the power, it was the power lift. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, that might be the other recommendation is yeah. because we're all guilty of this, that Get we a novel do, stimulus. Yeah. There. We default to the training programs that we like, or we kind of follow mm-hmm. the similar stuff. So you knowing your own tendencies as far as how you kind of train yourself and program, maybe look at our programs and go like, you know, like a, maybe a map strong, which is really unique yeah, and different performance, I okay. think would be totally different I, from what, what it sounds like you've been uh, doing previous to this. I, I'll say maps anabolic advanced. You're the perfect person for maps. That anabolic would be great advanced. Too. That, yeah. that I think is going to squeeze out some more muscle out of your body. But now back to what they're saying you're at a point, you're at, you're advanced, okay? You're at a very high level. You've been training for a long time. The best way for you to continue down this path now is to start to just enjoy the workouts and enjoy different types of fitness. So training through segments of mobility, through strongman type uh, exercises, again, back through powerlifting or bodybuilding, because each of those things is going to is gonna take your body to another level and you're going to learn more things about exercise and, and you know, different workouts. Uh, yeah, you look awesome. By yeah. the way, we pulled oh, up your, we yeah, pulled up yeah. your page. Yeah, yeah. We just pulled up your page so we can get an idea of where yeah. we're at too. Yeah, you are, you're definitely- You're at a very high level. Yes. I, ma- okay, MAPS okay. Anabolic Advanced. <laughs> MAPS yeah. Anabolic Advanced was designed for someone like you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, dude, you look Okay. You look I'm, I'm going to send you MAPS Anabolic Advanced, follow that, Um, and I, I you're probably going to squeeze out a little bit more muscle out of your body. I use that time. during like my, my bulk phase. Yes, yes. Go yeah. into calorie mm-hmm. surplus- Follow Maps Anabolic Advanced, uh, and then get back to us. Let us know how yep. how it happens. Yeah, you're three you're, to five hundred. Yes. Calories. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. What's your maintenance? Um, I said about twenty one, twenty two. Okay. Yeah, I'd yeah. say yeah. Bring it up to twenty six or so. Twenty six hundred calories. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good goal is to get your calories up higher than that for the amount of muscle mass you have on you and as good. As yeah, you, you got great delts and arms. Yeah, good no, job. she looks phenomenal. I, I'm very trap. Everybody, all the guys always ask me, "What do you do for your traps?" I'm like, I don't do anything. They're just <laughs> genetic. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah, no, you you have a great physique. I mean, my my if you were my client slash friend or what like that, my only thing would be like, hey, just just also recognize like how phenomenal shape you're in, and don't get obsessed about always chasing like the next level or whatever like that. I think that's important in your journey too. Cause I think you look absolutely phenomenal right now. And we are just trying to squeeze out the last bit of everything with you here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always shooting for the stars. Yes. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Follow maps anabolic advance and then get back to us. Yeah. I would I'm, love I'm really to hear curious. It. Yeah. Okay. You do. Mm-hmm. All right. Deal. All right. Thank Nicole. you. Thank right. you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's another, look, there's another person like you get to a certain level this is exactly it like the power, hard to this continue. Is, this is exactly like the powerlifting girl, only on the aesthetic world. Yeah, right? yeah. Like she has reached a that peak performance. I'm glad we looked at the pictures too, because like it's so hard to tell when you're looking at these Zoom calls. Like you want just we, the face. Yeah, I mean, I here's again the to add on what I was saying to her is like it, it, if she's a friend of mine. This is where I'm starting to tell her too, like, hey, like, I mean, what are your like lo- lifelong goals? Right. Because if, if you can just you know, stay close to this shape for the rest of your life. I mean, you are, you're killing it. At this point, when you're at that point, that level of training, that consistent, uh, you you really have to shift away. And I hate to say this because people don't like it when I say this, but you got to shift away from trying to hit goals all the time. Yes. Yes. You just have to, now it's okay to, to, to throw them in there. Mm-hmm. But make them different, right? Like, like make now, them, she would be great to like focus on mobility. Yeah, like exactly. Also become this mobility queen. or pick an exercise that she never, did, you know, she never focused. Yeah, never good done at it. Before. Become good at Turkish get up. Yeah, let me get yeah. good at it. Yes, but but really move away from being so goal focused. She's not going to stop. You're never going to stop working out. Obviously, she loves it. Move away from being so goal focused and just love the workouts. Focus, and, yeah, and yeah. love 
the different facets of fitness because that'll take you to the end. That'll take you to the very end. So otherwise, like you're going to end up hitting the wall because you can't constantly, you cannot progress forever. It's just impossible. She, well, that's she why these kid other too? programs would be great for like her to just experience different avenues totally. of fitness and not get so obsessed with, you know, body composition. Next question is Chad from British Columbia. Chad, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, this is pretty cool right now. Um, thanks for having me on. Uh, just wanted to say, start by saying thanks for all the content you guys put out. You got it. I've gained so much knowledge from listening to you, like fitness wise, but other areas in life, like being a dad. So it's pretty cool. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to start by giving you a little bit of a background about myself. I thought that would better frame the question. Um, so back in 2017, I was diagnosed with a benign brain tumor that impacted my hormones and my testosterone levels at that time were like really low, like around a hundred. Um, so under doctor supervision, I started to take androgel and then finally by the time in January, 2019, that was in the normal range. Um, last year, my wife and I started like wanting to start having kids. So we, uh, tried to wean me off the testosterone, but in this January, we found out I couldn't make my own testosterone anymore. So it was back down to, to zero this January. Um, at that point, my doctor put me on uh, HCG. So now my levels are higher than normal. So like 1200, 1300 range. And those have been my levels since. Uh, I've been weightlifting for around like 10 years now, but I don't feel like I've made 10 years worth of progress uh, like prior to this year. Uh, last November, just to switch things up, I took up running and was running three times a week and strength training three times a week. Back in 2019, I was at a peak weight of around 225 pounds and I didn't really like the body fat percentage I was at, probably around 30%. So the next year I cut down to all the way down 177 pounds and I would say I was around 12% body fat. I'm not sure, just guessing. Um, it was pretty brutal. <laughs> And then this January, just slowly uh, gaining weight over the past few years, I was around 193. So I cut down to 187 pounds by March, but I was eating like 1800 calories a day and running three times a week. And I was listening to you guys too. So I knew that probably wasn't ideal. So in March, I started to see an online coach with the goal of increasing my metabolism, having my body fat percentage around like 13 to 15 and being able to increase my strength. So he got me started eating like 3,100 calories in March, which is a really big jump for me. Uh, and then now three months later, I weigh 206 pounds, but I'm put on quite a bit of strength in that time too. So finally to my question, uh, did I gain weight too fast in that three months, like around like 19 pounds in three months? Or is it possible that like my higher than normal testosterone cause most of that to be muscle and based on my goals should i decrease the number of calories i'm eating or increase or keep them the same chad in that period of time your body fat percentage only went up one and a half percent yeah it's phenomenal yeah. bro that's yeah it. yeah according no, to those like in body machine yeah, that, things one one to two describes what's happening right one there. to two pounds a week uh and the fact too that you're on trt so you gotta know that when there's a big difference when somebody is <clears throat> on TRT versus uh, natural because your body is primed to build muscle basically 24 seven, which everybody else is kind of this ebb and flow of peaks and valleys. And yeah, but it's more than that. It's more than that, Chad, because you didn't go from normal to HCG because, okay. So you got your numbers up to your total, right? I don't know what your free testosterone is, but you got it up to 1200. Well, if you were, you know, at 800 and you went up to 1200, eh, you'd notice a little bit, not a big deal, but you went from zero to 1200. Okay. So it's like, it's like when the government, uh, like when we did those, <laughs> we did the lockdowns and then they, and then after the lockdowns, like, look at all these jobs that we had. It's like, those are the ones that we, <laughs> we lost because of the lockdown. So it's not the same. Like we're just, Magic. we're just coming back to where we were. So yeah. the amount of muscle you gained, um, is, is because you were at such a deficit to begin with. Okay. So you, you fueled yourself with more calories. You got your testosterone in the upper levels, uh, versus you're probably eating too little and you had no testosterone. 
So right. that's, and your body, and you, you already know the answer to this. You tested your body fat. You only went up one and a half percent. Yeah. They're, 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 it's not too fast. And your question is to to stay or cut or what that, I mean, no. this, this is, stay I, there. yeah, I'd stay right where you're at. I think uh, where your cal or even slowly increase. I mean, if I can, if I can increase calories and only put on, you know, as, as significant as you did and only put on a percent of body fat every two to three months, I mean, you're, you're, yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great. So I keep awesome. it right where it's at. And, and you're in a place right now, 3,100 calories, 14 to 50. I mean, this is like optimal health right here. Your testosterone level is in a healthy place. Your body fat percentage is in a healthy place. If you like where your weight and how you feel is and your calories, I mean, everything is in a really good place. Now it really is. I mean, what do you want to do? I mean, what's your, your, your primary goal? And then we would adjust eating and training accordingly. Right. Yeah. So I would say my primary goal is just to, I think, keep increasing strength, um, but not get like too high of a body fat percentage. Cause I've always been scared of gaining weight. And I think that's why I was really scared when I saw that 20 pounds in, in three months. Cause I've kind of heard like the max you should be gaining a month is like two pounds. No, you, you you're gain muscle, bro. You test yeah. your body fat and everything. You're fine. Yeah. And, and okay. remember what the, the point I was making for Sal interrupted me. Yeah. It was just that you're, <laughs> you're, you're primed to build muscle when you're taking TRT. That that's one of the, that's one of the perks of it is that you are primed to build muscle. So most of those additional calories are going to get applied over to building muscle for you. As yeah. long as you don't eat over like and 3,100 calories for your size, that's a that's a good amount of calories, but it's still you could still you probably have room probably have room to get up to thirty five hundred calories and be totally okay. So, I would keep oh, I would keep slowly moving in that direction. That's what I would do too until I get to a place where it's like this is a lot of food. I don't want to I don't want to eat anymore. Forget the fact that um, I want to continue to gain more uh, muscle or not. It's like this is just so much calories for me to handle. Yeah. That's that's are kind you, of where. I'm, are you following a maps program? Uh no, I'm not currently. How many days a week you working out? Do you really I work out. The, game the coach muscle? has me on four days a week. <laughs> four days a week? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to send you MAPS Anabolic. Yeah. Follow MAPS Anabolic. Yeah. Do the three-day-a-week version. Do the trigger sessions on the off days. Keep your oh, calories the so same much. or bump them a little bit. You're going to gain more muscle. Oh, that's that's amazing here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you right. got it, man. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Hey, did, are, so yeah. you, guys, you guys trying to have a baby? Did, 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 pregnant yet, or are you still working on it? Well, I don't have... I got my testosterone at a good level, but um, my sperm hasn't started to come back yet. That takes a bit longer. Okay. Um, does, so, you, does your doctor have you continually to take HCG as they should? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah I'm, I'm on that for now. Yeah. I don't think they'll take me off. Yeah, they shouldn't. I mean, yeah. so I, I got yeah. Katrina pregnant while being on TRT and they just, the doctors just kept me on. I was on HCG at the same time. So you should be able to get yeah. that kicked back up. Yeah, I'm not a doctor, right. but I heard uh, Kegel's help. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Chad. So we'll send you maps and a ball. Okay, follow that. Oh, thanks so much, guys. You got it, well, man. Nice talking to you. You too, man. You got it, man. All Go right. get her pregnant. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'll try. You All got right. it. All right. Yeah, I mean, he, he tested his body fat. So it's like, listen, yeah, it's dude. only it's only too fast if you gain a bunch of body fat. He's just anabolic right yeah. now, man. He's he's and uh, it, I had to make that point. State. I had no, to make that point, Adam, because you. because no, you're right. It's that, that he was that, at a deficit. That's a factor too. Yeah, both, it would be like both. it would be like if one of us got sick, lost 10, 15 pounds of lean body mass, then got healthy and then worked well, out. Well, and by you explaining gain. that, it also explains for him what potentially might happen in the next two three months, which is he doesn't build as much. Again. Correct. So he may experience experience that where he goes now three months and now he only adds say two or three pounds or five pounds which would still be great which is still exactly mm -hmm. phenomenal it just means that you you had a lot to make up initially he made mm -hmm. most of that up but i mean this is also one of the the nice perks of trt is that you are at you are at like prime build muscle mode which is not how it works you most people yeah. bad night of sleep you know a little bit of overtraining a little stress testosterone drops. yeah testosterone drops and then that puts you in a less advantageous place to build muscle when you're taking it synthetically it's your prime by the way time. study just came out showed that uh that trt because the, the worry is does it contribute to more problems with the heart or whatever no nothing no no negatives and that, by the way, if, if you're listening to this and you don't know, or you suspect you may have hormone issues, uh, go to mphormones.com. We have partners there and this is what they specialize in. They're doctors and they can test your hormones. They also work with peptides. Don't do this on your own or don't just guess. You want to get tested uh, for sure. Look, if you like our show, if you like our information and you want great fitness information, Go to askmindpump.com. It's our AI model. It'll answer your question based on our episodes only. So it's our answer so you know it's true. 
askmindpump.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I am on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.